Oh, g'day there. Uh, it's Paul Lyons here from paintings.nz. Tonight's painting, number 31 of my Lyons on Lockdown series, is uh, a painting of sunset in the Mackenzie country. Um, so the sun is just um, illuminating the tops of the mountain there and the rest of the uh, the rest of the scene is is in um, is in deep shadow so dark dark colors here and a little bit of light on the edge of the horizon dark on the uh, um, hills in the background a little bit of light in the foreground here to show that there's a a road um, and a couple of uh, um, edge post reflectors on the side of the road and um, then a uh, small amount of light aimed off to the left hand side here of, the, of a car going around the uh, going around the bend as it were so um, this is technically quite a challenging picture to do. Uh, I think I'm going to start off by trying to indicate this this light on the horizon. Um, so just a little bit of uh, an orange colour to um, distinguish the uh, the light at the, the edge of the horizon from the from the rest of the sky. So we're just getting some um, some of the uh, sunlight down here on the low part of the coming through the atmosphere and we'll see how we get on um, it's it's the the difficult thing is is uh, trying to show the differences in lightness in very dark paint in uh, in watercolor because it's very hard to control the darkness of very dark watercolour. You either get sort of pitch black or something that's uh, a long way from it and trying to get the distinction between um, one area and another is... well, it's not something I find easy. <laughs> there are possibly other people who say, well, it's not a problem at all. But uh, for me, it's a real challenge. So we'll see how we get on. So I've got a, a wet brush. I don't want hard edges uh, in the sky. And as usual, I'm um, Putting in a um, line along the top of the hills that I really don't need to because the top of the hills, of course, is going to be dark as anything. So if I use um, a light um, a light colour here, uh, it's going to be covered by whatever dark I use on the on the hills. But it seems to be the, the way that I visualise these things. Maybe I should say to heck with it and just uh, paint that light colour down over the the hills and say. But uh, it really doesn't matter. Because I've masked um, the, uh, the top of the mountain here so that uh, whatever um, wash I put in the sky is uh, not going to affect the the top of the the mountain which I'll 
eventually paint with uh, orangey, some sort of orangey colour. So, just wetting this whole area so that when I put the uh, the orange light on, um, I can blend it away into the top of the sky and one of the things that you are told to do is to always use as large a brush as possible clearly I'm not using a very big brush at the moment but I'm just um, uh, spreading water around the place and I do want to um, have some delicacy of doing, but the, the the real thing, the real reason for using the small brush is not because of the, putting the water on, but because I'm going to put this uh, um, orangey colour on, and I don't actually want there to be much paint on the brush. Um, that's, even that's too much. So let's just dilute it down a bit. Um, We've got so as I say the need for doing this cutting in is, is really not um, not there at all. It's just a sort of habit I've got. some of that orange way over to the left hand side here or the right hand side as it will eventually become um, and uh, spread it round a bit just to even out the uh, variability in the paint layer. I don't know why people don't do this more, more than they do, but it doesn't seem to be a very um, common way of. I mean, there are people who do this besides me, um, but it doesn't seem to be a very common way of um, evening out washes. So as I say, I don't actually want very much of this orange right up in the top of the sky, so just Doing what I can to uh, to even out the wash, and I'm going to let that dry now, and I'll uh, I want to use a little bit of the uh, the the orange down here as well, so. Um, Just underneath the uh, the road colour, so the road colour is going to be grey because it's a, a tar sealed road. Um, but um, you can see where I've changed my mind about where the uh, why the white line is going to be. But just a hint of colour in the in the very foreground here. All right, so I mean, this is the road from here to here. This is this is um, the stony area on the side. Okay, so let's uh, let's now have a go at introducing 
um, a grey road. Again, we'll be working wet into wet. Um, and because this is going to end up um, being a, a very dark scene, I won't be leaving these white lines white uh, eventually. All these lines will not end up quite in the end, um, but for the moment um, I'm not putting paint on them, so just wet in between the um, the dotted lines on the road, or the dashed lines are they? Dashed lines I suppose. I like these white lines down the middle of the road in my paintings, but I have to get them right. Messing them up is not a, a benefit. Alright, um, so that more or less does most of the... Uh, most of the road. And as I said, this is the uh, stony area on the side. Um, yeah. Brush not behaving itself. Okay, uh, now I seem to have covered over that white line. I don't know whether I can pull it back out again. Or else I don't know whether it really matters. We'll give it a go. So let's lift it off some of that colour. Um, and see if we can bring up the grey to there. Um, this is probably completely unnecessary. So it's not going to be darkened up enormously later on. But well, we'll see. Um, so, now, one thing I want to do, dry as that sky, looks as though it's getting on to being dry. I'm going to cover it over with, um, a cloth, and, um, this area as well, because what I plan to do now is to, uh, Do a bit of splotting into this area. Like there's a rather bigger splots than I was after. Um, just to uh, introduce some texture into this um, area with the stones. Oh, I seem to have got away with that without disturbing the colour of the paint on the road too much. And the paint on the sky seems to be okay. So I think um, we're at a let's leave this to dry stage because I definitely don't want um, to mess up the um, particularly the colour of the sky. So I think that we need that to be completely dry uh, before the next phase which I think is going to be putting in dark blue, trying to produce a, a good dark blue up in the sky. All right, so see you shortly. 
Right, oh, we're back to um, working on the sky. Um, so, dark blue is the order of the day. And uh, yeah, this dark blue is uh, going to end up very dark indeed. Barely distinguishable from black is the is the thought um, so it's going to be uh, very dark at the top or perhaps I should say extremely dark at the top um, very dark in the middle and really quite dark down at the bottom just enough I hope this is if I can manage to get it to work uh, just enough of a variation to allow you to see that we're trying to um, I don't particularly want that to be blue well that's going to be very dark as well um, so I want to uh, start out with a a deep blue sky, a sort of an intensely blue sky um, and then apply other washes over the top um, to darken it successively so I'm trying to allow the uh, colour to even itself out um, and of course the uh, the blue is or at least when I let the the blue run down there um, combining with the the yellow and the orange to uh, produce uh, green or just bring that down to the uh, edge of the hills, the, the mountains so we don't have a hard edge there or at least if we do have a hard edge it's the hard edge of the uh, of the mountains rather than a hard, e hard edge in the paint so I'm going to turn this so it's facing down. Let some of that colour drain towards the uh, the top of the painting. We should, with any luck, um, maintain the uh, um, the light colour of the. Uh, of the horizon, if that's the right road to use, the edge of the hills. Okay, so pause to allow um, drying to take place and then we'll come back. Right, time for second sky wash. Um, so I'm going to apply water all over the sky area. I better not use the uh, same brush that I was using to apply the paint with a moment ago. And see how the brush is picking up some of the blue paint even though what I'm trying to do at the moment is just to uh, put water on the uh, on the paper but uh, it's difficult to do that without loosening some of the uh, the paint that you put there before and probably more so because I've um, 
dried with the uh, hair dryer and or the, sorry the, the paint stripper um, and uh, maybe not left it for for very long to to dry all right so let's see if we can uh, uh, produce a darker blue this time and it is to be hoped that um, these repeated um, washes of successively darker colours will produce a uh, um, um, a more even colour in the sky. Sometimes you can uh, get a nice even wash in the sky with uh, a single layer, but it's very unusual. So I find that it's more reliable to uh, um, wash, dry, wash, dry. Sounds like some sort of laundress's recipe, doesn't it? But there is the uh, difficulty that when you do apply a lot of washes, if you have any um, delicate um, bumps in the tops of the mountains, that they tend to get evened out by the uh, the fact that you never quite get into all the nooks and crannies in the same way from one wash to the next. But again, um, to some extent that should be dealt with by the fact that um, not only is the sky very dark but also so are the uh, um, the hills so oh, I've got a, a light area here which I'm trying to drain some paint into but I don't know that's going to work it shouldn't matter a great deal since it's going to be under the, uh, or at least some of that is going to be underneath the uh, the mat um, from the frame. But well, there's no harm in trying to do it at this stage. Uh, maybe it's evening out a bit. I don't know. Maybe not. Hmm. All right, more drying. And before we do that, I think I might dry the board so we don't start picking up paint and um, introducing colours into the sky that we really don't want. All right, see you again shortly. Um, right, where are we now? Um, again, just trying to, to darken the uh, the sky uh, with a mixture of uh, blue and um, neutral tint. Um, I might uh, I might think about adding some. Uh, some red into it just to, not because I want purple particularly but just to uh, have something else that's absorbing in a different part of the spectrum from the uh, the blue the neutral tint should um, uh, if not complement the blue, but um, 
add to the effect of the blue, but it does seem to be that putting in uh, red produces a darker colour than just mixing blue and the very dark grey that is neutral tint. Let's uh, do what we were saying we were going to do, which was to add just a t smidgen of of red to the, uh, the dark colour. Maybe another smidgen. So we're just trying to uh, bring this dark colour in against the uh, tops of the hills. I don't know that it's really dark enough. Might need another two or three thousand washes to be added to that. Ooh. But at least at this stage, I think we're. Uh, getting a reasonably um, even dark colour in the sky. Let's see what it looks like after it's dried. So what it looks like after it's dried is uh, considerably lighter and duller. I'm not too unhappy about the, uh, the colour of it, but it's not um, no. Yeah, I think we just need to to keep on going with this approach. With the uh, the blue, blue and the neutral tint, and um, a little amount of red. Oh, and let's uh, I keep forgetting, or I'm starting to forget, to uh, um, I'm starting to forget to put water on. So that looks as though it's got a reasonable, reasonably even coating of water. So we're getting sort of midnight blue colour, although this is um, by no means actual midnight. Um, it's, uh, well, I suppose this was summertime, so maybe around about nine o'clock in the evening. And, uh, Just a bit of light catching the tops of the hills, so there's some some sunlight still glowing. And I've got a a dark line across there and another dark line there, so I'm hoping to uh, allow the paint to to move. It's not really cooperating at the moment, so oh well, let's take a, a risk. So that's even that out, but it's still. Oh, well, maybe we'll leave it at that. Um, so that there's just some sort of afterglow near the tops of the hills, but the uh, the rest of the sky is not too bad. I don't know whether I can influence that at all. because the sun's coming from over here on the left and I've got a light area in the sky which I'd prefer not to have over the tops of these hills on the right um, but I'm not sure I can... oh maybe I can get some paint to run out of the... Uh, the anyway, I was getting a bit of paint to run out of the tops 
of those hills to fill in that area. Okay, that'll do. More drying. See you shortly. Right, well that uh, last drying was a bit disappointing. It didn't produce... I mean, I know that um, we all know that drying watercolour makes it go lighter because the uh, paint is sinking into the paper fibres and the paper fibres are white so they show through more. I thought we'd got to the stage where um, we were getting quite a dark colour but well twas not so. So let's go through another round. I do have one other trick for making colours dark which you will have seen if you've watched all my other videos but I want to leave that for the uh, the land rather than the sky because I want the land to be even darker than the uh, the sky and I suppose part of the reason why this isn't um, making things as dark as I would really like it to is the fact that I'm wetting the paper beforehand so I'm diluting the paint to some extent but on the other hand it's this pre-wetting that um, is what is helping the uh, the evenness of the washers so patience and wash and dry wash and dry Ooh, let's not have the paint disappearing off the edge of the board onto the floor Now this time, surely, this is dark enough. See the red coming through this time. Another benefit of the uh, dampening of the uh, paper is that it doesn't dry out too fast. So I can take a little bit of time to try and um, follow these lines. Well, I seem to have lost the one on top of Mount Cook there. <laughs> one thing that everybody will recognise. It's also quite difficult to uh, see the edge of the dark brush when it's applying dark paint on an area that's already quite dark. So um, we've got just a little bit lighter, which is what I want, um, at the bottom edge. And although this looks awfully dark, I still expect that it's going to uh, to lighten up when we dry it. So let's find out, shall we? So I've started the camera up halfway through the drying process. So I've done the, the right hand side. Look at the difference in the, the richness of the colour between the, the right hand side and the left hand side. Oh well, such is life. Okay, um, 
we can see that there's, I mean, there's still some streaks in the sky there. Um, and it's pretty dry. But you can also see that it's, it's lighter down here um, than it is at the top. And I think we're going to abandon the sky, at least for the moment. Um, having, I think, was it 596 different um, layers of paint that we've put on there so far. And uh, turn our attention to the uh, the hills. So very dark down here by the uh, um, by the road. Maybe a little bit of light just sneaking over the tops of that hill there, and uh, lighter at the tops of these hills. Not very light, but um, darker at the bottom and. The road itself getting into quite a lot of darkness. Um, so let's let's start out by um, just applying some of that dark colour. Uh, over the hills. This time we're going to start out with um, the darkest colour possible and uh, I'm not going to fuss about dampening the, oh, excuse me, I've just hit the uh, the camera, um, I'm not going to fuss about dampening the uh, um, the paper because it's not so important that the um, It's not so important, what is not important, I've forgotten. It's not so important that the area should be um, completely devoid of uh, lumps and bumps because of course it's land. So dark, 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 down at the bottom there. It's a very blue colour. One of the things I dislike about Payne's Grey as a colour is that it's uh, um, very blue and uh, I seem to have produced a colour that has exactly that characteristic here. So we've got dark against dark. Um, now I don't know whether that's going to dry streaky or not. It may decide that it's going to uh, have a whole lot of artifacts on it. But let's just see how things go, shall we? Um, now what colour am I going to do the tops of those hills? Because I want some light on them. Um, or at least I don't want them to be uh, lit in the sense of uh, having the sunshine on them, but there's just a... It's got far too much colour in it. So it's dark in it. It may not have enough colour in it. Don't know. No, I think that's going to read okay. So we don't want to uh, produce a halo where there's a, a band of paint that obviously follows an edge, which is very easy to produce when you're doing. You know, you, when your brush is literally following the edges as I'm doing at the moment. Um, so I want to uh, mix these areas. 
So, feeling as though that's... That's a bit better. Um, so that's got a bit of variation in it. Uh, and let's change to a different brush and a slightly lighter colour. So there's a bit of... I want these bits at the backs of the hills not to have any light on them. So let's just fill those in. Okay, um, nice dark colour in here. So we'll see how that reads when it's dried out, whether it's going to uh, become too light or not. If it's too light, that's fine. Well, I've been looking at this for a wee while. I think it's worked. Um, I was not sure whether I'd be able to uh, to pull it off. I think it's done what I wanted it to. It's got a beautiful velvety blackness from the distance. Um, and it sort of sinks into the uh, um, into the uh, the the, um, the mat that I've put it in. Um, couldn't see the stars, so I've just increased those the size of those a little bit and the um, angle of the. Car headlights is sort of pointing upwards, so I'm trying to maybe make it a little bit more horizontal. But that's that's uh, something I really don't want to uh, mess about with too much. So I'll just leave that without having changed very much. But I think that's uh, um, I think that's acceptable. <laughs> so. Thank you for staying with me, and good night.